This presentation covers resistance and Ohm's law. It's fundamental to an understanding of electric circuits. Resistance. The resistance of a piece of wire depends on four things. The type of conductor material, what's the resistance made of, what does it consist of? The length of the wire, or the length of the material, the cross-sectional area of the material or the conductor, and the absolute temperature. Here's a diagram that shows this. Resistance in ohms, symbol omega, is the resistivity of the material, Greek letter rho, uh, small case, the length L, and the cross-sectional area. So the area, as we well know, or hopefully know, of something circular, like a piece of wire, or circular cross-section, is 2 pi times the radius squared. And the radius, of course, is half the diameter. So I wrote this as um, pi d squared over 2. Um, what is the resistance of one kilo ohm of number 18 gauge copper wire at room temperature? It's, uh, the diameter of number 18 gauge wire is 1.254 millimeters. The resistivity of copper is 1.7241 ohm centimeters. So the ohmic resistance uh, to current flow um, is directly proportional to the length of the conductor or inversely proportional to cross-section. Here is the resistivities of, of uh, some other um, common materials, including tungsten, nickel, iron, and copper. So you can remember this equation. Sometimes it's referred to as Ohm's law in its uh, basic form, where the resistance is equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Resistor networks are formed when resistor components are connected together. Two resistors are said to be in series when one terminal of each are connected together, as shown um, in the first diagram. The equivalent resistance between the remaining two terminals is equal to the sum of the individual values of resistance. Of resistance. Two resistors are said to be in parallel when both terminals of each are connected together to, to form two common terminals. Um, the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance between the two um, common terminals is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual values of resistance. This is a little more complex operation, but one that you should be able to handle. This is the resistor color code. Um, this chart is kind of, uh, maybe fine, depends on, you know, on your, how big your, uh, your display is. Uh, but it's not easy to read because the numbers are embedded in the colors and they don't show up very well. Um, but basically, um, you can use this chart to, um, to determine the value of a resistor just by looking at it. You typically won't find numbers. You will typically find these bands. And the first band represents the first number. Um, the second is um, followed by a decimal point. Okay, the first number is followed by a decimal point. The second number is um, um, the color would give you the second digit. And then the third tells you the numbers of zeros that follow that 1.2. So in a sense, the color code is in scientific notation. You can refer to our presentation on scientific notation in this module. Resistors, 5% tolerance resistors come in, um, by the way, that's probably the fourth band would be either gold or silver, and that would determine whether it's 5% or 10% respectively. So 5% tolerance carbon resistors with a gold band is the fourth band um, are usually standard values, and they're multiples of these numbers, and that's because the tolerance is then would work to cover the entire range of resistors you might need if you needed to select one for a particular value. So you can see some of these numbers, and as, as you work more in electronics or electricity, these numbers will be popping into your head. Um, 
So it's going to be very hard, for instance, to find a 41 ohm resistor with that color code. It just isn't going to be there. 36434751566226875. That those integers repeat as the value of the resistance goes up. You'll notice, by the way, that the K represents kilo ohms or thousands of ohms. Ohm's law is the fundamental law for this course, although there are several others that go along with it. The current in amperes through a closed circuit is equal to the voltage applied by the source divided by the total resistance in ohms around the circuit. Here's a problem for you. Actually, three problems. I won't read these for you, but uh, you can work through them. Um, just using that simple formula, relating voltage, current, resistance, if you know two, you can find the third. <laughs> 